Welcome to another training video of PropFrex on Air, and this time we will try to talk a little bit about the mixer setup, the different capabilities, and of course voice tracking, because I recognize that a lot of people find it confusing why there are so many options within the mixer setup and how to properly set it up for voice tracking. And this is actually indeed a strength of PropFrex on Air because it doesn't tell you how your workflow should be, how you set up your environment. No, you can all define all your mixer setup and all your channels and all the audio routing exactly like you need it. And I tell you, everybody is using them in a different way because some people use external mixers, some people use only one single sound card, some people use an external microphone, some an internal USB microphone, and uh, so forth goes the story. So there are so many capabilities and possibilities and that's why everybody is using it in a different way. And now I'm trying to, to focus on what capabilities you have. Um, first of all, let me disable my little tooltips because I think they're uh, a little bit annoying. So I don't use to show my tooltips because otherwise when I hoover over uh, all my options, I always see tooltips. So Mixer channel setup first. What have I done? I have in total one, two, three, four, five mixer output channels and one mixer input channel. Let's start with the mixer input channel. I just double click on the name to open up the configuration. And it shows me I'm using ASIO low latency driver with a certain sound card device. And this is very important. I already output the microphone signal to another mixer output channel. In my case, the VT, it stands for voice tracking mixer output channel. So that means every time I record something from my microphone, uh, I do route in parallel the audio signal to another mixer output channel. And you can also already see that in the level meters, when I speak to the microphone as I'm doing now, you will already see that the level meters are not only moving in the mixer input channel, they are also moving in parallel to the VT, to the voice tracking mixer input channel. So what else have I done? I'm using five mixer output channels. One you have already learned, the VT mixer channel. But there are more to come. The first one I'm using is the play mixer channel. The play mixer channel is no physical mixer channel. It's actually a virtual mixer channel. That means the mixer channel is just a virtual sub buzz. It doesn't output anything physically to a sound card device, but it is routing its audio signal to another mixer channel. So whenever I connect a player to this play mixer output channel, the audio signal automatically gets copied over to the out mixer output channel. Why is that useful? It's useful because I'm using a secondary, the card wall mixer channel. That's also a virtual one, so it's not connected to any physical sound card device, but the audio signal is also copied to the out mixer output channel. So now I have two logical mixer channels and one physical, the third one, is a physical output mixer channel. You see, I'm using ASIO here as well, and I've selected really a physical sound device. And this, this is the end. It's not copied over to any other output mixer channel anymore. So this is physical play out. When we now go to the general settings up here in the upper left corner and go to the routing, you will see the DJ players are routed to the play mixer channel, that's the virtual one, but my card wall are separated and going to the card wall mixer channel. The rest is going to PFL, so not really important. So just important to note is that the uh, DJ players being used in the um, playlists, they use the play mixer channel and card wall goes to the card wall mixer channel. I separated them so that I can independently control the volume. I just give you a stupid example. When I play this track up here, Randy Crawford, uh, then I'm, uh, I'm just doing that. Then you will see that the signal goes to play and from play, it goes also to output. Let's test this. Yeah, you will see that play is moving here, the, the level meters, and then the output signal is moving as well. Yep, perfectly well. 
just stop that. And you saw that probably that the VT level meter is moving as well. And that is just because I'm recording this video and I just uh, routed uh, for demonstration purposes uh, all the signal also here to my input mixer channel when I play something so that you can hear the actual sound. So that was not really clear. Um, so when you don't do that recording, you will basically only see play and out moving and that's it. And a little help here because when I uh, play something I automatically activated the PFL signal just listen to this little blue signal down here and then you will see that it might go when I activate that one also to my PFL channel that is just a simple function right click activate PFL and then you copy or you can copy the audio signal also automatically your PFL channel if you want. That's it. Um, okay, so I hope that is clear so far. So DJ players go to play, cartwall players, we haven't seen that, let's play something, they go to cartwall and from cartwall to output. But through this little send function down here which I've activated, I'm also routing my cartwall signal to the VT mixer channel. That is interesting. So let's try that and then just I deactivate now all send to functions and see what's happening. So it goes to the, the level meters have been moving for cart wall, for out, and for voice tracking. That is funny. Just deactivate the microphone again. Yeah, and then it's clear cart wall and out are the only ones. And that's the only reason because this is happening because this is I selected for my cart wall that the audio signal should go to out. That's all what I did. Um, so just because I'm, I'm recording the video, uh, the input signal is, is used twice here in my demo, but that is just uh, by purpose. So normally when I play the cart wall, the cart wall routes the signal to my output and now to the send to function. I make a right click on the send to function, just do it again, down here, and then I can select VT for voice tracking. That means I have another copy to function. I can even copy the signal to any other uh, mixer channels in parallel as well, and even uh, to three or two in, in the same time. So when I activate now this button, then the cart wall setting goes not only to out, as defined here. No, it also goes to VT as well. So I route my cart wall signal to two mixer output channels. From cart wall, it always goes to out and VT. So that means now that VT, this special mixer channel, contains exactly two signals, my microphone and my cart wall. So uh, let's try that, and you don't will you will not hear sound. You will just l see the level meters moving when I activate uh, the cart wall. I guess you see them moving, and now I can activate the sound to it as well. Yeah, so perfectly well. As exactly as I wanted. VT contains the two signals, microphone input and cart wall. And output is my default output that goes to my mixer, that goes to my streaming device, uh, whatsoever. And PFL is just for pre-fade listening, of course. This is uh, not something I'm going to talk about much here. So just recap. In the routing setup of the general settings down here, you specify play for your DJ players, and cart wall for your cart walls. So those two signals go to separate mixer channels, play and cart wall. Cart wall is routed to output, plus through the send to function down here, it also goes to VT, to the voice tracking mixer channel. Play, on the other hand, only goes to the output signal and I don't activate any send to function down here, which means output contains play and cart wall, while voice tracking contains cart wall and mixer input channel. Input goes to VT and cart wall goes to VT. So why does that come in handy now? Let's start voice tracking a little bit. 
we just select the track and then this one and the subsequent track will be will be voice tracked and you can already see in my voice tracking dialog i have another level meter which is the one i'm recording and in my voice tracking i have now the capability to select a source device by default the source device is the microphone but i can switch that and then it will remember it from then on um, i can remember that I want to record from my voice tracking mixer channel and I will select that because as you can see I'm speaking microphone is active everything is fine I'm recording what I talk my microphone plus I can open the card wall here as well and when I now play the card wall track I will record that as well look to this level meter now while I stop speaking but activating the jingle yeah? The jingle is directly recorded in my voice track as well. And that makes it really giving it a live feeling. Uh, I can and will record something, I will speak, and I can use the card wall, and everything is live and instant as I'm using it. And this really is a huge difference just because I used the source voice tracking mixer channel and I set the mixer channel up to record both card wall and mixer input channel. That's just a specific, specific routing and mixer setup. Um, yeah, so why is that nice? It's nice because now I can even fade my volume uh, of my card wall and I can directly record it. The only thing what you have to make sure is that you do not specify the card wall as track insert option. Leave that unchecked because otherwise Every card wall click will result in a track insert event of my voice track. And this is something I don't want to have here. That's just an other option, but it will not contain any fades, any um, yeah, volume level changes of the card wall. It will, in that case, only insert stupidly the track insert events of the card wall whenever I click on it. Um, in certain situations it might come in handy, that's why I coded that option, but normally you don't want that. So let's start voice tracking. I open my card wall, everything is up. I start recording now and I can speak, I can talk and now I can start my jingle. I can fade, talk over, you see the card wall is lowered, can even make it more low. Whatever I want, I can start the next track. I can more speak over it, and when I'm finished, I can stop my recording and see what's happening. Music for lunch lovers. So, now I have recorded something. Collapse the card wall. And, uh, yeah, we can see what, we, what I've recorded. Uh, and I guess it's uh, pretty obvious what I recorded, so just pre-fade to what I recorded. Yeah, I guess you, you get what I mean. I just recorded my card wall plus my microphone. And that's exactly what I want to have. I can play with my talk over function here. I can manually adjust the volume, whatever I want to do. Um, yeah, so that really gives me all options I need during voice tracking. And it only comes in handy because I have the flexibility to route my audio signal in the mixer setup as I want. Uh, and as said, everybody is using it differently. so. Other people with other, other environment might set it up differently, uh, but I guess this one is a real classic setup for a voice tracking studio. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.